<laughs> Easy on the water. Of course it was. <laughs> teach me, teach me the ways. <laughs> Chris and I were both like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> We have a bowl that you can wash your hands. We have water that we... Yeah. We'll give you a wet wipe and a towelette. Good morning! Today is day one of the actual installation day of our rich solar panels and our entire Battleborn battery electrical system. We are so excited and Aaron has been outside prepping for a few hours already. It's about 9 a.m. right now and we're about to get started. You feeling Hello! Re you feeling ready? I'm so ready. I've been waiting for this day for quite a while prepping for it mentally physically it's gonna be a big challenge this is gonna be a huge epic project we're doing here with Billy and Brandon from Rich Solar and Andrew Mann from Man Solar this is gonna be very special so what we're doing today is we're adding 2750 watts of new rich 250 watt 50. special panels that uh, just came out they're going up on the roof Andrew's gonna be helping us do this big install, and uh, I'm excited. We're just so happy that uh, you came to us and asked us for, to make 250s for you. Absolutely. And uh, whenever someone comes up with a good idea, we yeah. try to implement it. That's cool. You speak it into the word, and, yeah. and here we are. Here we are. About six months later, and now we're in this beautiful forest, and yeah. old friends and new friends, and we're looking yeah. forward to the build. Awesome. Much, Andrew, so. thanks again for coming out. And, yeah, no problem. And uh, helping the call with this. From Billy. And Dave. the goal with the 250s is to what, Aaron? Cover every single inch? We are gonna maximize the solar on that roof space. And just wait till you see it because it is gonna be covered in solar. Yeah, we're gonna get started today. It's gonna be a busy, actually a couple days on this project. So we're just gonna be kind of bringing you along, showing you the pieces of the install and uh, have a good time. Yeah. All right. So our goal is to fit 11 of these 250 watt new rich solar panels up on the roof. We just did a dry fit and it's looking pretty good. Nine of them are going to go vertical and two of them we kind of got to do sideways. So we're going to put the brackets on those nine vertical on the ends and Andrew actually has a great idea to kind of overlap the brackets, uh, less holes in the roof and um, more space saving because we're going to be really tight on that passenger side. So while the guys are doing the solar, I still need to kind of figure out placing the board. We got our two multi plus, these are the 24 volt 2X 120s. So these are for the, the 50 amp RVs and we are gonna go with the 24 volt system. So we got the two links distributors. I'm not gonna do the links BMS just because I like the smart shunt, how small it is. And also I like the Bluetooth functionality, uh, but we are gonna have a servo and the screen as well. And then a couple solar charge controllers up there, the Victron 15060s. And then we'll have two of these DC to DC converters. These are the Orion 24 to 12, 70 amp. And we have to do two of them in parallel just because the leveling system in these big RVs can, they can pull a hundred amps. So it's just a little bit too much for these 70, even though these do sp spike at 85. And then I'm still working on the battery placement. We're gonna do two down here, two behind the wall there stacked on top of each other. So basically these are gonna be in parallel. These two will be in parallel and then we'll series connect those two to make our 24 volt bank. And then up front, this is where all of the RV components are. So I ran that black corrugated, uh, that six gauge battery cable there. I ran that from back to our other Battleborn batteries so that we can put the two Orions up here. And then the Orions are gonna step down that 24 volt to 12 volt for all of our standard systems. It's gonna be a busy couple days. Super excited about this and it's gonna come together quick. Next up, I'm gonna be making some of this four-aught battery cable to uh, interconnect the batteries. And I've 
kind of covered some of this in my previous videos, but this is the same equipment that I've used uh, in the last three different installs. So it's definitely paid off for the use that I've put it in. But this Temco, it's a nice, uh, it's not hydraulic, but it's a big, easy to use crimper. It does a nice job, eight gauge all the way up to four out. It's sometimes hard to find the four out crimpers. So tinned copper, four out lugs, nice heavy duty. And then this beautiful Temco 4 aught welding cable. Nice, heavy duty, flexible. I'm gonna oversize this in my system. I bought this for the 12 volt when I was going that route. You know, since we're gonna be using this system full time and possibly running two inverters, two air conditioners, things like that. So I'm gonna go with an oversized, nice 4 aught cable when I probably could have got away with the 2 aught. Here we go. This is where they start to put the panels down and everything comes to fruition and you can see how it's gonna look but this is pretty exciting so the six panels fit perfectly on this 33 foot fifth wheel on the passenger side 1500 watts just on the passenger side man what do you think billy it makes me so happy <laughs> yeah it's yeah. a tight tight squeeze but yeah, there's, you know, engineering and measurements, and then there's real world application. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, you know, you read the manual, hey, it says it should do it, but sometimes it doesn't. But yep. Right. It's why I'm so passionate about these 250 watt panels. I think that extra width uh, is just wasted space on a roof. Yeah. And I'd much rather have that extra 500 watts up there than, you know, an extra couple inches of space to walk on. But that's just me. I'll be agreeing with you when we're cranking our three ACs. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we can actually run three ACs off uh, those inverters. Well, that's what's even impressive is there's three air conditioners on this 33 foot RV and, and there's still room for 11 250 watt panels and those two roof air vents. Beautiful. of day one super successful got the panels up billy's got the whiskey out already time for a drink now that was supposed to wait until the complete we were gonna wait until the last day but but it was such a successful day so much butt today all guys. the panels are up there it's yeah really nice up there. i agree there's no need to deprive ourselves i don't think so and then you got a little special treat for us yeah i like to cook meat we got some tri-tips here for everyone for dinner tonight. Uh, Christina has been making us the nicest meals ever, so I try to keep up with her. <laughs> we we want to eat well tonight, and tomorrow night will be uh, after all the batteries and everything's connected. Hopefully, we can do a sous vide St. Louis barbecue ribs. That yeah. So, so good. funny story today. <laughs> Billy was gonna do this in the sous vide. He's been telling me about the sous vide since we first met in January at the Quartzsite event. And he was bragging it up and he had it all ready to go. And then he's like, oh, well, I need an inverter for this and I need a generator for four hours. And yeah. it was one of those classic, yeah. this is how you learn how to RV moments. It really is, yeah. And this was cooked in the in the oven of the RV, yeah, I tried the rental to do, RV. I tried to do a slow and low bake. I washed my hands, but now there's just cameras on. I better wash it again. I don't want to <laughs> Easy on the water. Of course it was. <laughs> teach me, teach me the ways. <laughs> Chris and I were both like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> We have a bowl that you can wash your hands. We have water that we... Yeah. We'll give you a wet wipe and a towelette. <laughs> we do military style hand washing here. Oh, you have the big wipes? No, no like the water on, the water off. Oh, wet, off. Suds, so. exactly. Okay. That's how we shower, that's how we wash hands. You have a lot to learn. <laughs> I do, we do. We're going to take our first showers in the... We, we only sell solar panels, we don't really live in the RVs very much, um, but thanks to Aaron and Christina, we're doing this now and uh, we're going out more and more. We're going to take our first showers. Do we take them together? Did you or <laughs> how, how, much, how much water saving are we doing? Well, that, well that's, uh, that's that up for you discretionary. Save or not save your water, I don't know, but nope. you might want to think about heating your water up at this point. That's I did true. give them the half hour propane tip. You gotta, everything's gotta be planned out. And All right, so before I pour my second drink, I'll go out there, 
turn on the heater, uh -huh. yes. and then <laughs> yes. come back, and then by the time we're done with the second drink, it should be ready to go. Yeah, I'll let you it. go first. All right, let's get a little yeah. cut action going on here. So we have a coffee rub, and then just salt, pepper, and garlic, the Santa Maria tri-tip style. Mm, it smells amazing. So I use my hands. Oh, good. Okay. He doesn't need the tongs. He's a hands man. Okay, let's see. Cross cut. All right. It looks good. It looks moist. A little moist. Mm -hmm. Looks okay. How about you get the first slice? First slice? Chris is gonna eat a little piece there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, very good. Did the cameraman take one? That's really good. Mm, that is good. Is that the the coffee rub? I like it. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Really good. That'll do. Alright. Well, oh, slice it up and Excellent. Mashed, mashed yeah, potatoes. we're gonna enjoy a good dinner and uh, celebrate the end of day one. Yeah. We'll check you back in tomorrow. Let's go. Good morning. It's day two, and I have to say, pretty impressed with what happened all on day one. As you can see, all of the panels are laid out and mounted down to the roof. So we were able to fit all six panels on the passenger side, and then on the driver's side, we have five. And these are all 250 watt panels, totaling 2750 watts. And the way we have them run is the top three are in a series, and the bottom three are in a series to one charge controller, and then these five are all in series to a second charge controller. Also, you can see, not a whole lot of room, but I don't plan on doing a lot up here on the roof, so as long as I have a little walking path. The hardest part is shimmying over this air conditioner right here. So as you get up on the ladder, you got a little spot, and then you gotta kinda use the air conditioner to get over to this little trail here. And it's just wide enough for a couple of footsteps. And then once you get to here, this is the wide open space. Here's the combiner box. This is similar to what I used on my last setup and it works pretty well. It's just a, a waterproof sealed box that you screw down to the roof, sealed up with lap sealant. And this was the, the factory wire chase from Alliance. So these are the black and gray tank vents, and Andrew has just a little bit of finish work here this morning when he gets it back up here, and uh, he's gonna kinda clean up the wires a little bit, use some Eterna tape to hold them down and uh, finalize, make sure everything looks good. But I'm really happy with how these 250 watt panels fit. You can see they're, they're just about perfect, especially this this run on the passenger side that's 1500 watts if someone were to just do that run that's a good amount of solar and you'd have all this open space if you wanted but i definitely wanted to to fill it all up 500 watts right there i may get one of those telescoping ladders so i can get up on the slide boxes if i need to to brush them off or blow them off with the leaf blower i already got my three soft starts installed on the air conditioners, so I don't really have a lot left to do up on the roof. I just gotta mount the uh, Insti Connect. I put a little tiny grommet here that I'm gonna run the Insti Connect wire through, and that'll go down through the chase as well. And then I just need to mount that antenna somewhere. I'm not sure where yet. So then, down here is where we're going to be working today, getting the rest of the system set up. And I couldn't mount the batteries yesterday because a very important part when putting batteries in series is that they're all the same amount of voltage. Basically, they have the same power in them. So what I had to do was connect them all in parallel positive to positive to positive to positive and negative to negative. And what that does is that allows them to share all of the current and it allows them to equalize, to balance. Because if you don't, once you hook them up in series, 
they're not going to balance to each other. And so when we started, this had about a four and a half amp draw coming out of it. And you can see it's down to about 0.4. There was about a two amp draw out of this one. And you can see this one's pretty much down to nothing. So basically we left these on uh, most of the day yesterday and all overnight. And that allowed these cells to all balance each other. And that way I can get these batteries placed. So mounting the GX Touch 70 screen is pretty simple, at least in my setup, because the control panel is right here. So this whole box is empty for me. And then this is like a false panel. So it's all open. Um, so I basically just screwed on the mounting plate that it comes with. And then I'm going to uh, use the hole saw to put a couple holes in the middle just so it has room for the wires to pass through. And then the wires go directly, I'll just follow all these wires back down to there. So pretty easy install on this portion. So now I just run the wire through because it's attached to the back of the, the Touch 70 here. And we'll see if our holes are good enough. Ooh, look at that. How satisfying. On day number two, the big focus was to get the bulk of the AC wiring done for the inverters because this will live behind the mounting board of all the components. And in a one inverter install, this is pretty simple because all you need is one run of AC wire from the input side, your shore power, and one run of wire from the output side to the breaker panel. Now on the AC side, I think this gets a little bit more confusing for people. I know I was confused at first, but once you get the hang of it, it is quite simple. So think of the AC in as the power that's coming from your shore power, your generator, or if you have a transfer switch. In my case, my AC in is going to go to my surge protector, and then the surge protector goes to the AC shore power plug. Now the AC outside is what's gonna go back and actually power the entire coach. So that's gonna go AC out from the inverter back to my 30 amp AC breaker. That's gonna give 30 amps of power to the entire AC breaker panel, which then runs all of the appliances that are connected to that, including all the outlets, the air conditioner, the microwave, the water heater, all of it. But in a dual inverter situation where they're wired in parallel, like mine, you need to figure out a way to combine the single input and single output wire into two additional runs of wire to be able to hook up to both of the inverters. And this was the part of the install I needed some extra help with from Andrew Mann because I had zero experience with it and it was really hard to find a good source of reliable information about it. So a big thanks to him for assisting in this portion. All right, Andrew just finished up making these connections, the AC connections for the inverters. We ended up going with an 8x8 box, two of them, as well as these little Morris connectors. And I think it turned out really, really good. So this bottom box is the AC in. You can see my watchdog right there. So the shore power plug on the wall connects to the watchdog. The watchdog then comes into the top of this bottom box. And then basically we're using these connections, these three part Morris connections to then have the two AC wires come in. And so our inverters, remember, are gonna be mounted up here. And this is kind of tight to see. And then basically it's kind of the opposite for the box up here this is going to be the AC out. So the two wires will be AC out for the inverters. They go back into the box, combine back into a single run of six gauge, three with a ground, which then goes back to the distribution panel. And while that sounds simple, there was only one connector that I actually found rated for three wires of the six gauge size. I think a lot of people use split bolts for this application, but from what I read, they are only rated for two wires, not three wires. So in comes the Polaris or Morris style connector, which really is a simple, safe, and easy way to connect three wires like this. 
And the only downside I can see about these connectors is the ridiculous $25 a piece list price. We ended up losing a little bit of productivity on day two and quite a bit of momentum, but we did end up getting most of the AC wiring done and the batteries mounted in place. From the mountains, day three of this beautiful electrical install conglomeration with rich solar, Battleborn batteries, and our new Alliance fifth wheel. This has been an amazing time so far, and I can't say how excited I am for perhaps the final day of installation. So here's where we are at beginning of day three I have uh, the two Orions mounted I need to finish the wiring for that which won't take too much longer the multi plus twos are going to be going up uh, probably this morning sometime early afternoon we had to bust out our Starlink yesterday to try to search for parts uh, we had very limited Verizon up here but I didn't have an inverter so uh, we ended up uh, hooking up a little rich 1000 watt inverter uh, with the two rich 200 amp hour batteries right now powering powering the coach until the full system is complete and you can see Starlink over there pointed up in the sky it's working pretty good up here in the mountains actually and then this way into the main bay here get some light on the subject you can see we have our batteries in place this is that wiring on the AC side that turned out really good. And so this morning I need to finish wiring up the 24 volt battery bank and then we're gonna start laying the components. It's gonna be a long, busy day today, so let's get started. To keep the system compact, we ended up using only one of the Lynx distributors with the main disconnect and Bluetooth shunt connected directly to it. For the main fuse, I used a 300 amp marine rated battery fuse mounted directly to the battery bank. Previously, I've used T-style fuses for this, but because I was going with a 24 volt system, I could get away with the largest 300 amp battery fuse, and that really saved a lot of space and simplicity over wiring the larger T-style fuses. Once that was completed, we were ready to mount the board and start hanging the components. The 50 pound inverters were a little tricky and took three of us to get them mounted. But that's because of the height of these, we were unable to use the mounting cleat to help assist with this process. I then moved on to the two OTT battery cables for the DC side of the inverters. And after that, we were able to power them up and go through the quick process of programming them for parallel operation. Victron makes this part extremely simple with the Victron Connect software, and you can simply do this by following their prompts. Unfortunately, we only had three days with the entire gang. So by the end of that final day, we did end up running out of time, but we were able to get the output side of the inverter hooked up on the AC, and then we were able to do a little bit of testing. So we just made the final connections on the inverter. The system's not fully hooked up. The solar's not all hooked up, but the inverters are running. We just turned on the air conditioner and Chris was happy about that. Yes, because look at the temperature in here. 88. Oh, it dropped. It was 91. Yeah, so you can see that the system is Ooh. working. It's drawing power. And so now we're just going to do a little bit of testing, make sure things look right, and then uh, Hopefully tomorrow I can get the solar all hooked up and you know, I still got a lot of cleanup to do. This is a big, big job. You are exhausted. I can tell by looking at you oh, and yeah. listening to you. Yeah, I was a bunch of, you know, working from six to six every day. Definitely adds up, but with, uh, with the help of Rich Solar and Andrew Mann, that really helped a ton to, uh, to get this as far as it was in just a few short days. Yeah, what a huge project. Yeah, yeah. Congrats. So the install did get bumped into the fourth day and I did have to finish up a little bit on my own. 
but still all in all pretty darn amazing that we were able to get this size of system installed in about four days. I want to give another huge thanks to our partner Rich Solar in this whole process. Also Andrew Mann from Solar Man in the help of the installation of this and all in all this is going to be a long-term memory for Chris and I. Good morning. We are on technically day four of this install. Day three, you could see a whole lot got done. Both inverters are up. Uh, the outputs are wired. So that means off battery power, it's inverting to 110. So everything in the RV is working right now. And uh, basically what I'm finishing up this morning, kind of the last thing that we, we didn't have time to finish up is the charge controllers and the PV wires from the roof. So uh, one of the things we actually forgot was a PV disconnect. You know, doing the installs out here uh, in the middle of the forest has its its own set of problems. And uh, that was one of the parts we forgot. So all we had is a couple of these disconnects. So temporarily I'm gonna use these and I'll probably switch it out. Uh, I used a circuit breaker style last time or I might just get the actual uh, PV PV breaker from Rich Solar. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna have two of these mounted up to the wall, and then that PV wire is gonna go back into the charge controllers. So I'm gonna work on that this morning. Hopefully in the next hour or two, we are gonna have solar power charging up these batteries. All right, now that the one charge controller is hooked up and charging, it's working as it should. Pretty soon the sun's going to be right over top and we'll probably be getting in a thousand, uh, you know, maybe hopefully close to that 1500 watts. And so I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate the exact same thing I did before. Mount the PV switch over there, uh, run the battery cables and get the second one going so that we have full power charging this bad boy so pretty excited at least uh so far everything is working the the dual uh parallel inverters are working um, i made a mistake and didn't make the lines the dc lines properly so they're they're not going to share the load equally but i can change that once we have access to more battery cable but we did go ahead and test them with the air conditioner and it was sharing off of each multi plus so just put an amp amp meter off both sides and uh it was sharing so the parallel hookup that we did worked great but i am completely exhausted this is day four uh everything is hooked up and working as it should, except for some small stuff like the servo and the touch screen, a lot of wire cleanup to do, wire management running, but I am just beat. I can't believe how quickly this huge system came together in three and a half days. Running one AC, almost 2000 watts of solar, and still charging the battery at almost 20 amps. Pretty amazing. If you'd like to see a more detailed video on the actual installation process, more step-by-step, step, let me know in the comments down below. Those can be very tedious to make, but I do have multiple videos out with a lithium system installation in our Sprinter van, as well as an installation video in our travel trailer. And then also now we have this system that is in our fifth wheel. Once we have a little bit more time to button up the final installation steps as well as test the system out a little bit more, we will be putting out another video to show you the system and how it all works. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next video.